Hey guys, uh, we are here for our final session of DeFi discussions. I am very excited. Um, so we have Terrence here from Pris Prismatic Labs and he'll be giving an update on Ethereum 2.0 and I'll let him take it from here. Can you guys confirm in the chat that you can hear him? Hey guys, can you guys hear me? Hello, hello. Yep, good. Can I start? Yes. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, let me share my screen. Let's see. Uh, so it's already shared. You just need to toggle down. Okay. So it's right here. Toggle video. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So hey, everyone. Terry's from Prismati Labs here. Thanks for having me. I didn't know this is the last talk of the season. So, yep, thank you for um, staying towards the end. So today we'll talk about E2, the Topaz testnet hosted by um, Prismatic Labs. So let's get started. So I usually start with, um, let's briefly mention who Prismatic Lab is. We are a team of eight. We're implementing the Ethereum 2.0 client fully returning Go. So there's Raul, Preston, Ivan, Shay, Nishan, Vitor, and uh, Celeste. And shout out to other CC um, awesome open source contributors that have helped so far. So we wouldn't have been there without you guys. So thank you. So I did mention that our clients returning Go. We love Go because of this great concurrency patterns its preference of simplicity over magic, and it has excellent documentation. So if you love Go as, as much as we do, feel free to jump on and help us up, join our Discord, and we're always willing to help. So um, how did Prismatic Labs come together? A lot of people have been asking. Um, back in Jan 2018, we saw Vitalik sharding FAQ, and we wanted to implement sharding on top of the Go Ethereum client. So the, go the team was formed organically. Everyone's from different parts of the world. We don't have previous background history, history with each other. And that's really cool, you know, it's just a bunch of people that's passionate about something and end up building this out. Oops. So when we first started working on Prismatic Labs, we had this rule map in, in mind, right? As the um, sharding and the proof of stake spec iterate, we know that we have to iterate with the spec. So we know that we'll have different versions of testnet. So the testnet iterates. And as the spec, spec becomes more mature and the testnet will become more, more mature. So we started with Ruby, Sapphire, Topaz, and Diamond. So basically all the cool um, gems out there. So we, um, on October 3rd, 2018, we released our first proof of concept um, demo and that's implementing the Ethereum 2.0 specification. And back then, it was just a proof of concept. There's no networking layer. There's no external validator, nothing fancy, you know? It will, but it was still tremendous progress compared to day zero when we had nothing. And it definitely showed us what was possible. So we just kept going with it. So in between, 2019, we had multiple smaller test nets, but nothing worthy to make a grand announcement. And fast forward to January 2020, we launched the Sapphire test net. So let's take a moment to look what we had accomplished in the, in the Sapphire test net, which is the last test net. The Sapphire test net had um, 700,000 slots, uh, 22,000 finalized epochs, and 52,000 validators together securing this testnet. And testnet was ran for about, I would say four months about that time. And all of the, um, and all of all the 52,000 validators, there is about 78% validators that were controlled by us. So what I really cherish about this, this Sapphire testnet was not only is because of this is Prismatic Labs longest single client testnet with the most active validators, what I was really proud of was that we learned a lot on uh, process improvements, how to work better as a team. 
we met a lot of awesome community members and received tons of great, valuable feedback. And some of those feedbacks eventually ultimately reflected on the E2 spec today and now lives in the prison code. So shout out and thank you to um, everyone for that. This is our internal dashboard for the Sapphire testnet. One last time, I took a screenshot of that before we had to tour down the testnet. So you can see 700,000 slugs, lots of finalized epochs. The DB size is quite big at that time because we haven't optimized everything yet. So it's about 32 gigabyte and we have 52,000 validators and all these cool charts and stuff. So let's uh, shift gear and talk about our current testnet, which is the Topaz testnet. It was launched, I think about two weeks ago. So the last, last Friday. And um, so this, as you know, that um, this test net implements the latest E2 spec, which is version 11.11.2. This is the audit version of the spec, and this is the version that all the clients are currently using and which will be used to target multi-client test net. We're using 32 Go ETH, not, not the real ETH, we're using the test net ETH versus the previous 3.2 ETH. And this is as mainnet as it gets, right? All the user configurations, all the setups in this testnet are the same for the mainnet. And then we also does a lot better in terms of caching stuff. So the caching of the um, the state object and using the fast serialization for, for the from the fast SSC library are both enabled by default. So previously they were behind a feature flag, so you had to manually enable it. But after going through some rigorous testing, now we're confident enough to have them on by default. So what it means that your node will be consumed less memory, uh, perform a lot faster for hashing block and state objects. We also have, yeah, we also have um, a lot of network related improvements. We now have dynamic substitution for community attestation subnet. Previously, um, it was not by default, but now this is on by default. That means that your big node that's not a testing will not be listening for attestations in community subnet. You will only be listening for aggregated attestation in the aggregate subnet. So this dramatically reduced the network bandwidth and CPU cycles to verify on aggregated attestations. The initial syncing speed is also fast now with Topaz testnet. I know we have been hearing many complaints about the slow syncing time. So various implementations for sync speed improvement were deployed and enabled by default. So for my personal setup, I'm seeing about 800, 80% uh, faster blocks per second sync speed during the initial sync phase. We also have this new state management service, which is awesome. That means the node periodically saves historical state in the DB. That means that just a regular prison beacon node can generate any historical state at any arbitrary slot. So this will be services for historical RPC requests, such as if you need validate balance, you need assignment. And this is great for building cool side project around this, such as block explorers, such as data providers. We also have slasher service detector that's running on by default. And uh, she and Ivan have been doing great work in that department. So with that, we are able to catch catch slate us. We are, we're able to catch us a few slashable offense. So super exciting stuff here. So um, I took this Grafana page, an internal dashboard page, about two days ago. So this is how the Topaz is doing. It has about a um, hundred thousand slots, three thousand finalized epochs, and the uh, DB size is about one point three gigabyte, which is not bad. And then about two thousand uh, five hundred, uh, sorry, twenty five thousand active validators right now. And what's awesome about this testnet is that Prism only con so far only controls half the validators. So around half of the validators are running by community members, like just like you guys. So it's really awesome to, to be able to know that we are not in full control here. Oops, sorry, one second. 
Okay, so you may have um, people people usually have this question is how to join Topaz Testnet, and uh, so yes, we want everyone to join Topaz Testnet. So we want this process to be as seamlessly as, as possible, right? And then we love people joining our testnet because that's the best way to gather feedback, improve better user experience, and address any question and concern. So to participate the, to our testnet, you can join this link above, prioritlabs.network. And the registration process is pretty easy. It's just six steps. You know, you download the Docker image, you get ETH, you get the go, you get the go ETH, which we have a fossil for that. And then you generate a set of validators, private key and public key, which will be used for E2. You launch your VKNO validator, you send the validator deposit, and then you wait for a day to maybe a few days, depending on how many validators are joining at the same time. And that's it. So if you have any feedback on that, please do let us know. We want this process to be as easy as possible, as seamlessly as possible. Aside from that, our awesome tech writer Celeste has been putting out wonderful dark portals with all the pages ranging from how to get started if you're a Linux user, how to get started if you're a Windows user, Mac OS, ARM64, we all covered that. How does Prism work, developer tools, pop, pop, and then all the public API endpoints. And I will go into that for some of them. So this is probably the number one request I've heard that can we run Prism in ARM64? The answer is yes, you can. So here are a few steps. You can install Prism on ARM64 with Bazel. We also have a shell script for that as well, which could be easier. And uh, we've gotten great feedback, actually. We got a lot of great success stories. And uh, so users have been telling us it's working, whether it's, um, whether it's um, Raspberry Pi, which is Nano TC, and that's really great to see. Aside from that, we also been getting awesome support from Ethereum on ARM and Avado. Thank you guys for the hard work on supporting Prism on your platform as well. So please do check those out. So Les also has been putting great tips on the dark portal, right? For example, how do you improve your P2P connectivity so you get more peers? How do you enable slashing protection? How do you do cool stuff such as just putting graffiti on your blog so people know that you're the validator? So do take a look at the tips section as well. And we also have a FAQ section because nowadays we have been getting many of the same questions, but and those answers could be found there. For example, you get questions like, um, how do I stake with multiple keys? Um, what, what's the wait time? Why do I have to wait one more day? And like questions like, why am I losing balance here and there? So please do take a look at the F FAQ page and do let us know if we miss anything in the FAQ page. So we also get many questions on the validator's profitability. And I do agree that's important. That's one of the main reasons why you won't run a validator in the first place, right? So Vitaly tweeted a few days ago, the first lucky validator just go to 1% return. That's awesome. And that's over two weeks of uptime in Topaz Testnet. Some of our contributor in Discord have been putting up great work on monitoring validators' visibility with Grafana. So props for them to make that happen. So we have great monitoring on Grafana on the beacon node, but it's great to see that now you can actually monitor validator profitability using, using Grafana as well. So yeah, if you guys need a link for that or need help setting that up, join our Discord, we'll be happy to guide you. And then use E2 stats, super cool projects. You can, from this page, the E2 stats page, you can see the individual nodes, its locations, how many peers, how many slot. And with that, we're able to see some beacon node has um, more than 400 peers and it's just super impressive.
And then we get a lot of questions these days on basically what you can build on E2 today. And there's a lot of cool things people can build. There's a lot of cool side projects idea out there. And with that, Prism actually has a full functional set of um, RPC endpoint basically people can use. So this endpoint support um, a gRPC or REST over HTTP. So please do come check those endpoints out. And with that, I would also like to ask for everyone to give us feedback on whether this endpoint makes sense or you would like to see more information, less, less information, whether it's too verbose. And with that, I believe that you can build whatever you want, right? You can build like a cool, like, you can build cool like a validator protection program. You can build cool like a validator dashboard to see staking reward. So yeah, please do come try it out. And with this, with the RPC endpoint we I mentioned, there's a, a handful of awesome projects, Bitcoin Block Explorer out there using our um, endpoint today. So Ether again has an awesome Bitcoin Block Explorers. It shows the epochs, slots, validators, stats, E2 deposits. It basically shows all the information that you need to become a validator or to be or the, all the information that you need to be aware of the of the current state of the beacon chain. And there's also besides um, Etherscan, there's also Bitfly. Bitfly also has another beacon block explorer. So shout out to them on that. They have been doing great work as well. And same thing, you can see the epochs, slots, basically all the information that you need to be aware of the beacon chain. And then if you really like it, if you think they're doing great work, be sure to donate to their um, Gitcoin grant as well. So you may ask what's next, right? What's, what's ahead of Topaz testnet? So the next step that we wanna focus on is uh, the coordinated multiple client testnet. So we want multiple tests of coordinated Genesis event between all the clients. We also want to release our Prism beta and our version 1.00 release, which will target the final spec version. We're also undergoing all day right now with Quantstamp. So really excited to see the audit report and uh, I can't wait for it to phase zero, man. I can't wait for the mainnet launch. And uh, with the multi-client testnet, uh, shout out to uh, shout out to Avery. And um, the first of many multi-client testnet has been started um, last week, and um, it has been ongoing. Right now, it's um, Prism and the Lighthouse and Taku are playing the testnet, where Ebony split in uh, validators count. So yep, this is, yep, it, it's happening, man. So really looking forward to that. And that's all I have for you guys today. I am, yep, it's about time. So thank you for being here and um, listening to me. Join our Discord, follow us on Twitter and ask us any questions. Um, I see a question in the um, ask a question sec uh, section. Right. So around the expected economics of yeah. running E2. Yeah, I can, I can. Yeah, I can dive into that. So right now, um, it's a formula it depends on how many validators are um, staking at the same time. So the more validators, the less of your reward. So initially, um, when the to kick off the beacon chain you need um, 16,000 um, validators, and that's about um, 50,000 ETH. So with that, you get really high reward, right? Because of there's just less validators. So the reward is about probably like 10 to 12%. And then as you get more and more validators, the reward will um, decrease. And then I believe it's a quadratic, it's a quadratic formula. And um, feel free to join our Discord and ask the question. I'm happy to answer one in, in depth. But um, the health amount, the healthy amount is about two hundred thousand validators, and that's about like four to five percent. And um, yeah, 
Okay, so the next question, I missed the part of multi-client testing just now. Can anyone join now? Thank you. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, you definitely can. So um, join our Discord, we'll happy to get you to it. Although the multi, just a fair warning, the multi-client testing is just starting. We just started last week. So it's fairly shaky right now. So do expect there will be um, frequent restart, perhaps every two weeks, three weeks, depends on the box that we find, depends on the network issues that we find. But yeah, you can definitely join the multi-client testnet. We would love you to be here. Or you can join the Topaz testnet as well. So there's so there's there's definitely a single client test there and there's multi-client test there, and there's definitely value to join both. Can, could you talk more about the slashing condition? Um, could, yeah, uh, that's a great question. So um, there is slashing and there's penalties. So penalty means that your validator is offline, your Wi-Fi goes down, and the your computer shuts off, which I hope you don't stay on your computer, which it's, it, 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 you can think of this like an honest mistake, right? So for penalty, it's not that bad. For penalty, you just essentially lose the reward that uh, that uh, you, you, you'd have gained. So let's say if you, um, let's say if you're supposed to get reward for 6% a year, if you just do nothing, you get penalties. And then which means you just lose 6% a year. But slashing is worse. Slashing means that you're um, actively trying to do something bad and that and that can be proved. So that means that you double vote, you surround vote. And then in the proof of work um, vocabulary, that just means that you vote on conflict blocks, right? You basically building two chains at the same time. But that's not acceptable for proof of stakes point of view because you're actually creating two sets of histories. And then with that, you can be proven because of your node is um, your node is um, basically projecting a um, conflict value. So yeah, so with that, um, our um, client has built-in protections on that as well. So that won't happen unless you your validator connects to uh, multiple beacon nodes, which will as a future, uh, which as a uh, future uh, feature that we will protect against as well. But that's not something to worry as, as a day-to-day -day user because that should be protected against. Does Basil have any closed source component? And do you have any plans to get away from Basil? No, the Basil that we're using now does not have closed source components. So you don't have to worry about that. And do you have any plans to get away from Basil? We don't have any plan right now. We love Basil. It's great. It's great for building. And then I imagine that as a day-to-day -day staker that you don't even need to use Basil, right? You can, first, you can use Docker, you can use our script to launch. So there's many different ways to start or we can know about the client and without use Basil, and those work great as well. And then if you really have questions with Basil, so there's something you don't like, there's, I'm happy to take the feedback if you join our Discord room. Zooming out into the future, is the Prismatic Labs in touch with staking service at Polychain, Bison Trail, Binance? Also for the small forks, is Rocky Pool participating? Wondering if we have insight of them. Yeah, we definitely do keep in touch with those um, exchanges service because we want to provide support. We want to provide support, but I don't really have much visibility as, uh, as what they're going to do for day one. We only um, talk to them in the context of providing support. If you don't want to use Prismatic Labs, we're here for them. And then if they need any, need any um, help with E2, we're here for them. But I don't really have visibilities in terms of like what they're going to do um, for day one. Also, um, for the small forks, is Rocky Pool participating? Wondering if you have some insight on them. Yeah, I, I believe Rocky Pool is participating. I've been following their work closely. They're a great team. They're doing great work. And uh, I believe they will be a day one player. So um, yeah, do check out their website, join their Discord room as well.
All right, great. Uh, so if there are any last questions, uh, can you guys ask it now? Um, otherwise, I think we can wrap up for the night. Cool. Do you have any uh, final thoughts that you want to nope. share? Nope, nothing from me. Thank you for having me. This is great. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. And thank you, everyone, for staying until the end. You guys rock. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye.